Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. You're in the right spot to learn everything you need to know to grow your brand through brilliant social content and design. My name is Emma. I've been on the GoDaddy team since 2013 and I absolutely love my role because every week, yes, every week, <laughs> I get the opportunity to help everyday entrepreneurs on a variety of topics such as website advice, social media content strategy, and branding in general. And today I'm so fortunate to be able to talk to you. This is GoDaddy Open 2020. This is a huge event for us given everything that has gone on this year because building your brand online has ever been more important, right? And I'm so excited to help you learn more about how the Over by GoDaddy app can help you create a brand with real impact. So let's get started. And hey, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear them. So drop them below and we'll get to that at the end of the presentation. All right, sweet. So these are the topics we're going to talk about brand identity, what it means, what it can do for you, and how to build it at a granular level because you can use over to bring your brand personality and identity to life, which is super rad. But I hear you asking, Emma, <laughs> Why are we talking about branding? I just want a ton of followers and likes on my posts. Well, I'll tell you there is a method to my madness here. I promise in order to develop a brand on social media, you need to start with establishing your brand's personality, your brand's voice. And when it comes to your brand's unique voice and personality, being consistent with who you are is how you gain and retain loyal followers. But before you can be consistently you, you'll need to establish who you are as a brand. So I have a quote for y'all. I love this quote. It's about brands and it makes sense, right? I mean, branding is sort of a first impression. Like you wouldn't show up to an important meeting with a new customer or a financial backer wearing like a tie dye t-shirt, pajama pants, what I was wearing like two hours ago, but you would care about the quality of the impression you made and you'd wear something appropriate for the moment. And that's branding. Like it's every bit as important as conversions and customer engagement because it frames every touch point and interaction that you have. So you might be asking, why is branding important? I know the term branding is thrown, a, thrown around a lot, but essentially it refers to the visual presentation of your business. So including your logo and your color scheme and your personality, even your business name. And given how all encompassing that concept is, there's a ton of reasons to make sure it's at the forefront of all your business decisions. In branding, when done right, <laughs> it elevates the look and feel of your company. It condenses who you are and what you do into a visual identity. And this brand identity can help your company stand out from the crowd. I got a great example of standing out from the crowd. Last year, I was at Outside Lands Music and Art Festival in San Francisco. Yeah. Remember those? <laughs> and I'm in the middle of watching one of my favorite artists perform. And then like there out of the corner of my eye, I see hooked donuts. They're mini donuts, delicious, check them out. But I recognize their logo like instantly, you guys, because I follow their Instagram. And their brand is uniform across all platforms and it directed my attention to my stomach instead of my ears. And that's real power there. And we want to bring that power to you. And that's what the Over app does for you. It helps you create a central resource for all of your brand assets. So you remain consistent with your message, no matter where your brand plans on showing up. And we'll get back to Over in just a bit. But first, let's make sure we really understand brand identity. And I'm talking about more than just your fancy logo. Brand identity is about how your company is perceived, what it stands for, and how business is conducted. And essentially, working on your branding efforts, it's vital to your success because it's the first element in every relationship you build with your customers. Because there are over 10 million small businesses in the US, they're all here today, no, <laughs> I wish. And each of them is competing for as much share of mind and wallet as possible. And branding is the way companies just like yours introduce themselves to new prospects and how they frame their relationship to existing customers. 
it doesn't matter if you're an enterprise or an everyday entrepreneur, you still want to stand out from the crowd. And I have an example of someone doing just that. So take Best, for example. They are an over by GoDaddy customer. And at first glance, their online branding is so impactful. It's elegant jewelry made for everyday wear together with this simple message. And I love this. You deserve to feel your best. And when looking at their website and Instagram, like you see on the screen there, the key message is consistency. I mean, look at the colors, look at the text. They all seem to come together to evoke positive emotions. And since all of their brand assets are in the Over app, they're able to create beautiful posts easily. And most importantly, they all look like they belong to the same brand. That's important. And that's making best unique and memorable. So for example, if I were to be scrolling through my Instagram feed, I would immediately recognize them without even seeing their name. Like, boom. Oh, that's best right there. And well, speaking of Instagram, check out these. So best products are awesome, but their product shots, I, I just love. They're so fun. They have zany pics with candy, uh, cheese wedges, and even celebratory cupcakes. And it creates this unexpectedly like pleasant mix with her classical jewelry. And it's unique. It's memorable. It resonates with a positive vibe. There's positive emotions that define the brand. And guys, that's what brand identity is if it's done right. And in fact, wait, one more story. I saw where they took a kitchen sponge. You're like, where is this going? And they balanced two ping pong balls on it. And then they put a set of earrings on top of that. You guys, I saw this like a month ago. And I'm still talking about it with my friends because I just love how unexpected it is. And if you're totally unsure, like if you're unsure how to get the same level of fidelity between brand identity and your company, well, I have good news. It's actually not that complicated. What you do need, however, is a process that can take all of the different elements and put them together to create something that will really communicate your identity to your customers. So let's break all this down into three steps. Oh, and a reminder, I hope the gears are turning. So please drop your questions in the Q&A and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. All right, so check it out. As promised, we got three things going on here on the screen. Define your key goals, understand your target audience, like who your ideal customer is. And number three, conceptualize your brand's personality and identity. And let's move through these three steps because it's important, you know, to make sure you get the most out of your marketing efforts, starting with number one, goals. So it's a good idea to determine your major goals early on. And if a potential idea just doesn't fit with your key goals, you'll either need to refine it or scrap it, right? And to do this, you'll need to ask yourself a few simple questions. Feel free to jot these down. Ask yourself, what do I want to achieve? What is the longevity of my business? And what do my products and services fulfill? And there's Oh my gosh, there's much more you could work on here. Ultimately though, you'll want to determine some specific objectives for your business and, and jot them down. And you'll wanna connect them too, to like the look and the feel of your brand. And if your company helps to simplify, um, let's see, how about home, home organization? Call me. <laughs> Consider a tidy brand identity. If your goal is to help people express themselves through fashion, go with something with more flair. And if you provide the world's greatest pies, also call me, <laughs> then, or no, give me my address, uh, then your logo might want to serve up a slice of fruity goodness, right? For those pies, you get the point. Now let's go into step two here, because you've determined your goals now, just like your business goals, you'll also need a firm grasp on your target audience when you're branding your business. And you wanna to speak to them directly, right? The answer to the question, who are you trying to sell to? Should not be everyone. And narrowing your potential customer base, it may sound counterintuitive, but by knowing who to target, you'll attract leads who will be more inclined to convert. So for example, I was vegan for like 12 years, so I always have to throw in a little vegan example. Okay. 
For example, if you are a vegan fast food type of restaurant, you'll want to make sure you are catering to vegans on the go, right? Plant-based folks in a hurry. Great business model. Not that you want to exclude carnivores, I'm not saying that, but you're fulfilling a need of your target audience. So to start, you'll simply want to look at your current customers and those of your competitors and start to generate an average customer persona. From there, list the benefits of your products and your services or your plant-based menu and make sure that they match this persona. And the idea is to start thinking about what the customer needs from you before they open their wallet. And then once you understand that, hey, you can move on to developing your communications. Next up, right? So at this point in branding your business, it's time to take what you already know about your company and your customers and develop a specific brand personality and identity to match. And it should be clear why this is important. When you project a persona that your audience can relate to, they'll be more inclined to gravitate toward your products and your services. And there are a lot of things that go into brand. I know. But we're going to go and focus on the basics, color, fonts, and logos. Color is very fun to talk about. <laughs> so color can be your, oh my gosh, it can be your most powerful design element if you learn, big if, if you learn to use it effectively. So be aware that each color is open to numerous interpretations based on individual definition, experiences. So for example, a maker might be orange. A healer could be green, like my acupuncturist. And a professional may trend toward blue, <laughs> but green could also mean progress or an indicator that it's go time, green let go. While blue can be a cooling color love blue. But play with these, play with them in combination, play with slight variations in each color, like different shades of orange, different shades of green or yellow or indigo or whatever, until you find colors that speak to your, to your company's customers. It's fun too, right? And the general rule of thumb is actually five brand colors, but I've totally seen this done. Many brands have done this one main color. But think about it, like having more colors is smart because it gives you more flexibility in all of your future design work. Just something to, something to think about. Let's talk about fonts. Oh my gosh, here on the screen, breakdown of different typefaces. When it comes to fonts, you could use a single typeface for all your branding and communication, but it's far more common and sensible to have about two or three options in your brand style guide. And sadly, but not surprisingly, not all fonts can coexist harmoniously like people and some pairings just look totally weird. But you'll need to try out a few combinations to find the magic formula, which will of course hinge on your brand style. The point to take from this is that whether we realize it or not, like we're able to understand the subtleties of typography. In fact, we're subconsciously snobbish in this regard to the extent that a poorly chosen font like, uh, for me, Papyrus or Comic Sans, anybody, just me, <laughs> it might rightfully raise a red flag and strongly affect our decision to engage with your brand at all. Let's talk about logos. Now, Logos is something entirely unique to your brain. It becomes its signature, its flag, and if done right, it can create an instant impression of what your brand is all about, like the hooked donuts that I saw at the festival. And if you're really intimidated by the idea of making a logo, you can always just find the perfect font and go the minimalist route, text only. Coca-Cola did it, FedEx, Sony, and this is referred to as a word mark and many brands, even some of the world's most recognizable will opt for this no nonsense route. And it's a pretty confident move in my opinion. But notice on the screen, I have a couple of different logos here. Literal logos use a universally understood object that's associated with your industry. So like 
spectacles for an optometrist or a surfboard for a surf shop. Lateral logos, they use an icon that alludes to a story or a differentiator like a sunrise representing a new day. Narrative, uh, narrative logos, they reference a key figure, like a place or an object in the story of your brand. So maybe the farm you grew up on. And abstract logos, they use a new symbol or a shape that might not exist in any real world sense. So therefore it's free of cultural or categorical baggage. So let's talk about consistency. I, I've said that word a lot, I'll say it a few more times, but when it comes to creating your brand's identity, consistency is key, you guys. Pick to them, pick them and stick to them for all your colors, your fonts, your graphics, choose designs that complement your brand story and your brand style. And again, I could sit here and tell you um, what's popular on Instagram today, but you know, that strategy might not be effective tomorrow, let alone six months from now. What you need is a long-term plan to keep your business top of mind for your customers. And that's what good branding will do for your social content. Good news is you have options. So when it comes to building a brand, there are a few options. I have them here. You can design it yourself if you have the skills. You can hire a professional if you have the money. Or you can leverage technology if you have the right tools. And all of these are great options. But I do want to talk to you about one of the tools that is available to you right now to take your brand identity to the next level. And that's where Over comes in. So Over by GoDaddy, it's a powerful yet simple to use, trust me, simple to use content creation tool that makes it easy to create all the professional looking content your brand needs. So promote your business, get noticed on social and make an impact with beautiful still or video content. And you'll find a library of hand curated professionally designed templates and layouts. They're there, they're ready for a quick customization with graphics and fonts, stock imagery and videos. So you can start from scratch or pick content tailored to your industry or marketing events. I mean, honestly, creating beautiful content has never been easier. But don't take my word for it. There are over a million active monthly users. There's over 150,000 projects started every day. And it scores extraordinarily high on customer satisfaction levels. And thankfully, got a little treat. We have a dedicated over by GoDaddy user here with us today. And I'm so stoked to introduce you to Dr. Amelie Anusa. Amelie actually uses over for her many endeavors. She is very busy. And she's here to walk you through her creative process on the app so you can see just how simple it is to create your own beautiful branded content with Over by GoDaddy. Thank you so much, Emma, for that introduction. And I can't wait to show you guys how I've been using Over for the past couple of years. So just to give you a bit of background about myself, my name's Dr. Amelie Anusa. I'm a junior doctor based in London. I'm also a podcaster and a book club host. And what I'm going to show you is how I use Over for literally everything I do. So we're going to run through the demo. So let me show you how I started using Over. Eight years ago when I was working in the Apple Store, we were all sharing the apps that we love to use and Over is one of them. Ever since that day, I've just been using it for literally everything I do. So let me get the app and I'm gonna show you how I've used it to create graphics for my book club, Modern Lit. So I'm just gonna run through the demo now. So just hitting play and let's go. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, what I've got here is the over layout. All I'm going to do now is to go through the collections and choose a collection that I love. Yes, of course, I chose the Be Bold collection. So I'm just scrolling. As, as you can see, there's some beautiful, beautiful templates. And here we go. So just one I made earlier. That is a blue piece of reference for those of you who, for, who are from the UK. But just opening up the images and selecting an image that I love. So as you can see, it's linked to the camera roll. And here is a picture from our book club, Modern Lit. And I've just selected that here. What I'm gonna do now is to replace this image with another image. And yes, I'm gonna choose exactly the same image and just to zoom in here. 
and if I can zoom in and get it just right, there we go, it almost matches and I've got a really exciting, interesting image. So what's great about OVA is that you can actually edit within the app. So you can see here, all I'm doing is scrolling and I'm going to scroll right through till I can find a black and white image. And here we've got one here, but actually you've got loads and loads of different type of filters. So I'm going to match the other image to also be black and white and then just edit some of the colours here. So you've got a range of colours and this is one that I saved earlier and I really want to go for like a sunny yellow orange. What's great about this app is that you can also edit your fonts and you want your fonts to fit in with your brand. So as you can see here, you've got some happier fonts, you've got some more chill fonts, you've got some fonts with serif and sans serif. But what I'm going to do is to go back to Butler Stencil because that's the one I use for everything. And that's just a great way of making sure that all your assets keep in line and that they really suit your branding. So Horizon is another font that I love. I love the boldness of it. But what I'm going to do is just slightly move it ever so slightly just so that it fits in with the image. So yes, once again, I'm changing the colour because I can never um, select a colour that I love. But this is the colour I'm going to go for now. And we're going to go back to black here. So the first event that I did was one on masculinity. The second event that we then held was one on Black History Month. So as you can see here, I'm just changing the dates, changing the titles to suit everything. And what's great about this is that people will recognise the branding because it really just comes into line with the previous branding that I had. As you can see here now, what I'm doing is just changing the space between the letters. Now you don't have to do this, you can make letters bold, you can make letters into caps and lowercase. But what I want to do now is to go back, I always change my mind, so I'm going back from the black and white to the full colour. Because what we want to do is to show that this is in full colour for Black History Month. And now, I always want to put a logo, and this seems a bit much for Instagram, but I think by having a logo and all my assets, it kind of keeps everything nice and together. So here's my modern logo, which I saved into over initially, and now what I'm going to do is just place a grain on top of that. So as you can see, loads and loads of graphics, it almost feels overwhelming, but that's a great thing, you can just choose one, if you don't like it, you delete. So here's the grain that I've chosen, I'm going to spread it all over the image, and what I'm going to do, scroll, 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 down to blend it, and then just overlay it with opacity. So here we go. It all sounds complicated, but it's much easier to do in app. Fab. So now what I'm doing is I'm moving that layer. So I don't want it to be on top, I want it to be under all the words, so you can see those words boldly. And fab, we're all ready and set to post it to story or feed in Instagram. Thank you so much guys for listening to that demo. As you can see, you can just try anything, use all your own graphics, use Ovis graphics and just play around. That was awesome, Amelie. I could listen to her discussion of content strategy all day long. <laughs> of course, if you're someone who's more comfortable with your desktop over your mobile device, no worries. Over has got you covered. The same way Amelie creates her content on her phone, you can from your desktop. Let me show you how it works. Cool. So here on the Over desktop version, I'm typing in coffee because I know what I'm looking for. And there's a lot of great options here, a lot to choose from but I like the barista in action. It reminded me of my barista days. Now I'm in the editor, changing the background color, which is easy to do. Blue is a good one. And also with the font, you can change, oh my gosh, there's a whole extensive font library that's in over, but I already know what I want, which is the Lulo. And I'm gonna resize it, realign it, and I'm gonna experiment with different colors. I like this one. Now. Let's minimize that too, because we want to be able to see the barista in action. Am I right? May your coffee kick in before reality does. So you can change the colors easily there. Go with a little lighter. Cool. Another great thing that you can do is delete and add other images or logos. Now, Over utilizes Unsplash, which has a ton of great sock images to pick and choose from, but I, I had my logo saved there, so. I'm going to add it here, minimize it, drag it over here to the left bottom corner. And you know what? On second thought, I think I want to change this image, kind of brighten it up. So back into Unsplash. 
looking at all the stock imagery here. But I'm thinking I need something brighter. Don't you guys agree? Like this is a little too dark with the dark blue background. This now is perfect. Got that non-dairy creamer exploding in my iced coffee. And now I'm processing it. I can post this on my social media pages, which we've already connected our social accounts and websites plus marketing. So we're able to preview the content and then look, I can publish now or schedule it for later. How cool is that? And again, it reminds me of my barista days, which I always need an excuse for that. Now you've seen how Over works on both mobile and desktop. And I really hope you found those demos useful when it comes to creating your own masterpieces. Because again, having a clearly defined brand identity that truly establishes who you are and what you do as a business allows the rest to just fall into place when it comes to content creation. So with that, I think this is a great place to pause answer any questions that you might have. I know there are some awesome resources up on the screen for you to explore, but if you do have any thoughts or, or questions about fonts, color palettes, or anything related to brand identity that we've covered so far, just put them in the question tool below and we'll get to it as many as we can. I know we covered a lot. All right, cool. So I'm gonna head over to all your wonderful questions here. And by the way, I know when I first get a lot of information at first, um, I can't think of the question right away, but we do have some and if they keep brewing up, please drop them in there. All right, looks like we have this, oh, this is a good one. What if the holiday season or traditional seasonal colors don't go with your brand? How do you post content related to the current season, for example, autumn or Christmas? So it's totally fine to create separate colors, like color palettes for seasonal campaigns. Also, good on you for thinking about the season. That's a great time to plan ahead, like for the upcoming holidays. But you don't have to use your brand colors exclusively for all your designs. However, it might be worth maintaining one of your brand colors as the base of your campaign palette but add a few other specifics to the campaign, say mustard and tangerine for fall. I love mustard as compliments. Um, another great question. By the way, thanks for submitting these. Oh yeah, comment. I never really knew how very important that this was. Hey, right, absolutely. Understanding branding shouldn't be exclusive information. Cool, this is another good one. What happens if you already have an image or photo that you like? Well, you can add any image to over from your camera roll uh, or on your desktop. In fact, you can even open an image in over from your iPhone's camera roll, add uh, your favorite image, and then bring to life with graphics and fonts. I know if it were my coffee spot, I would definitely want to probably use an image of one of my employees or me doing latte art. So you can totally do that. Does GoDaddy have fonts from their web design platform, which match fonts on over app to keep congruent style? The answer is yes. There is a large overlap of licensed content and it's actually growing all the time. These are great, you guys. Ooh, here we go. I'm in real estate. Awesome. Can you give me an example of how my company can stand out? Yes. Uh, first off, you have two things you need to sell. The property and the person or the people if you're a group real estate. But the person, the property that's who is forming a relationship with the customer and selling their biggest asset, right? So focus on making those things shine. From a personal brand perspective, focus on your values that lead to client success and your success stories from similar properties. Um, from a property perspective, try to find distinct photography style, like a great filter that shows off the properties in their best light, but becomes recognizable as a property you represent. Like think about it too, today, what did we talk a ton about? Consistency, consistency, consistency. So choose something, stick with it, choose templates that allow you to showcase 
clean visuals of the property, um, but bold price and key selling points. And we have plenty in the over app. Just uh, go in there and search real estate. So kind of similar to when I search coffee. Cool. Ooh, I saw a question about Instagram and I'm obsessed with Instagram. So I want to take this one. Also, it's helpful for all the entrepreneurs. I know this is a, a very uh, hot topic amongst entrepreneurs. So the question is, how would one leverage Instagram if you don't have a product to sell, but instead you, you offer a service? It's a great question. So if it's you delivering the service, then your personal brand is what you're selling, right? Kind of similar to what we're talking about with real estate, sell you, but build awareness of your service and your unique story. And that makes how you deliver the service special, makes it unique. And if applicable, associate it with a key, like calendar, uh, with the key counter occasions where you can actually create a regular usage for your customer base. So set up appointment booking on your website, drive awareness there to when you have an opening available. I've seen that. Um, also Instagram stories, you guys, I love Instagram stories. You can truly be less polished there and your, your most authentic self. And that's what customers are looking for. Um, speaking of Instagram, can this also be used on Instagram, the app? Absolutely. It's perfect for Instagram. You can post directly to Instagram from over like you saw at the end of the demo I did where it was like here, we're ready for a social post. It's just like that. That's how it look well on a desktop and uh, or save the image and post it later. Question, where do I find over? Do I just Google over? Where is the program? Is it on GoDaddy somewhere? I will clear that up. So you can search over in the app or the app store or play store, or you can log into websites plus marketing and look for the drop down marketing or marketing menu and then uh, select content creator. Hope that's helpful. All right, guys, these are great. Thank you so much. Like I love sharing all that knowledge with you, but you better believe I was just excited to hear from you and answer these questions. Can I use over if I don't have or want a website? Absolutely, you can create so much with over and you can use it anywhere you want, which is cool. Does over compress images? Yes, uh, depending on its size and the quality of the image you that you save. So like low, medium or high, um, but you can save designs in over like JPEG, .png, PDF for that. Kind of similar about the app. So much, I love the interest and the Q and A around this app. It's awesome. It's a cool app, right? Can I upload my own font? Yes. Uh, also just want to point out that there's over 300 fonts to choose from. So like when I was doing my demo, I went and chose, I had Lulo already top of mind, um, but there was that extensive font library. Yes, 300 plus fonts, which is rad. I would probably get super distracted if I didn't have one in mind. I'd be like, oh, maybe this one. <laughs> but remember, think about your brand and be consistent with your font there. What are some online sites other than Unsplash um, that you could use for stock photos? that we use it over uh, Pixabay, Pixabay or, um, or you can upload any of your own images too. Uh, don't forget that with the over app, which I don't know, everyone's different about photography. I love to take photos. So in the, in the theoretical world of me owning a coffee shop one day, like you better believe I want to take those photos, but totally get it. That's not everyone's interest um, or skill set, right? Like I would never ask my mom to take a photo. <laughs> Oftentimes the photo never even happens. So totally get it. There's a varying interest and skill set with photography. So the good news is Over has a ton of stock images, which is great. Keep them coming, you guys. I love this. I love this. 
I know another, oh yes, this was a good one. Um, yes, okay. So Emma, you talked a lot about brand identity. I sure did. And building your brand. What are some of the ways in which your personal brand can direct or directly impact your business? Yeah, so talking about your professional journey and beliefs could help build a positive sentiment about your business and then like giving glimpses of your personality can give your business a more human vibe i am all about that like let that personality shine through and just ooze into your social media content absolutely also participating in ongoing conversations about your industry could result in invitations to speak at relevant business events and also connecting with like-minded individuals can help increase awareness and encourage potential clients to work with you. Yeah, hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> Price. Ah, here comes the money talk. Price of the, I was waiting for it. Price of the standalone app. It is $69.99 a year. It's about 70 bucks or $9.99 a month about 10 bucks a month. Oh, also, um, there have been, I was notified there's been some sound issues uh, with the technology, but just know that the recordings for this will be on the GoDaddy YouTube next week. So apologize in advance for any technological issues there. Thanks for your patience. All right, I'm in the fitness industry and specialize in coaching endurance runners. Rad, I started running finally uh, during quarantine. What are some top tips for standing out on Instagram or other media that is flooded with many similar looking posts? I would say find a need of your target audience that you fulfill and focus on being best at that. Uh, what sets you apart from your competition? Hone in on that. Um, also, try out new formats. So, like, think about where your brand comes to life. Like Instagram TV from the amazing places you get to experience. Yeah. What if you have more than one brand? How would you create both of the brands. Well, first of all, congrats. That's impressive. Uh, there's no limit to the number of designs you can save in Over. You can save graphics, you can save color palettes and um, logos for as many brands as you'd like. In fact, I know Over has empowered many small one person design agencies who use one account to service multiple clients there. Yeah. We still have a few minutes left for Q&A. Keep them coming. Okay, here's a good one. I would like to know how to isolate my custom logo to add to my content. I, I don't have Photoshop or the tools to do so. Well, thanks for sharing and asking. So you can easily create your own logo in Over, and then you can save it as a, as a graphic in your own logos folder which is pretty cool. And if you already have a logo and a PNG or saved as a PNG, uh, you can upload it from your phone or your desktop into this folder too. So keep it super organized, right? Um, in that folder there. So yeah. Oh, here's a good one. I did talk a lot about colors. Yes, um, advice for how to choose brand colors. Uh, we like to break it down in two approaches. Uh, one, use your intuition to choose colors for your brand. So like if you're a free spirited, um, instinctive sort of person, you might want to use your intuition to choose your brand colors. Take a look around for inspiration in your world, your home. Maybe you have a favorite color that you use. Uh, the other approach would be to actually research trends to inform your brand colors. So you can also look to current 
fashions and trends for inspiration. If you love, I don't know, Pottery Barn, um, look through the latest catalog and see what colors make an appearance. Maybe you love the beach cottage designs filled with coral, seafoam green, or you love the deep reds and rich browns and golds and the traditional English bedroom setup, you get the gist. But you can actually do your research, just search uh, color trends, color schemes, color palettes, or Pinterest is a popular site or Google to do that. And uh, yeah, don't forget to see what your competitors brand colors are as well. Maybe you want something similar or Maybe you want something that's just wildly opposite of that. Oh, that's a nice compliment. Over is awesome. Yes, it is. Thanks for uh, the comment. How do you get the app on your desktop? So just go to www.over.app. So www.over.app. And you'll be in business. <laughs> Got just a little bit more time for some questions. Does font on logo need to be consistent with all other fonts on designs? My business name is in italics on my logo. Well, not necessarily. Um, your logo can be something that is unique and would usually use a display font, um, which is all about standing out, right? Uh, for everyday posts and designs, it's most important that your fonts are easy to read. You know, I don't want to be like, what does that say? So they're easy to read and they're in sync with your brand's personality. Cool. All right. That was awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, you guys. Oh my gosh, this was so much fun. I hope that you found it all valuable, the information, and that you got a chance to get your questions answered. And hey, if you did learn something new today, why not share it on your socials? And don't forget to use the hashtag GoDaddyOpen2020. And be sure to tag us too. I can't wait to see what you create. And the next session will be starting in just a few minutes. See ya.